Hi friends, welcome back to Honeybee Farmstead. Now this is just going to be a quick one. A lot of people have asked me what the cream is that I put on the teats of my cows after I've washed them in the morning and before I put the cups on or milk them. Um, it is an utter balm recipe that a good friend of mine made up for my cows. We've altered it over and over and over again um, and I'm going to alter it again today. But the basis of the recipe I will put right here um, for all of you guys following along at home. And I'll also put it in the comments below this video. Hey Jax, what are you doing? <laughs> He's going to help me out. So um, terrible lighting in here. My house has got terrible lighting. But um, we're going to make the outer balm. It's really, really quick and easy. I'm going to show you what we're using today. Natural beeswax. Unrefined organic shea butter. The cleaner the product, the better, like cleaner, the better the results in my opinion extra virgin olive oil we're going to use some castor oil because it's really good for you I've been learning a lot of good healthy things um, oh that's my apple to eat when I get hungry and um, rose hip oil it's for dry damaged skin sunburn wrinkles scar tissue eye creams etc etc now calves do cause all those kinds of issues so um, I like to put a bit it's it's not in the baseline like the base recipe but it's very very handy to use you can switch out your different oils and things these two here are what make it like a pasty cream so they can't be switched out you've got to use them and once it's cooling and not when it's hot we will add some drops of really soothing essential oils you're welcome to do that as well but it's not a it's not a necessity and i wondered last time so what happened to our uh utter balm last time that we had was one of the kids knocked it off the edge of the um table crazy. and no no that was when grace walked past it oh yeah then the, then the cow broke the other one yeah. so what i decided to do these are just old um like from having fish oil or vitamin d or whatever i've peeled the label off um, and i've been saving them because i like to recycle as well you can see these were you know it doesn't really matter it's good solid plastic and we're not going to pour anything in there that's too hot it's going to cool down because the only things we're melting in the heat are these two here and then i'll take them off and i'll use my thermomix but you could use really anything you like to do all the measuring for the rest of the ingredients and we'll stir it all through so things like the olive oil and the castor oil will go in after these are melted um please chill out after these are melted, we will start pouring these things in because as the temperature drops um, and it's not boiling hot, it'll be safe to add all these other things without ruining their lovely properties. So let's get cracking, hey? Before I forget, um, what you're going to use to melt is called a double boiler. Um, I'm sure a lot of you cooks know exactly what I'm talking about, and I'm going to show you what I'm using today. Um, I'll just switch you around. So, just a pot that we're going to heat the water, and a microwave safe, of like a jug, um, Tupperware jug. And what we're going to do is get it really hot after I've measured everything into there, or sorry, my beeswax and my shea butter into there and then i'll turn this on get it hot and melt it down i'll show you guys when i'm doing it all right i've got thermi on i'm gonna go across to scales it asks for 150 grams of shea butter but i'm gonna double the recipe because i've got those nice big tubs and i don't want to have to keep making it all the time so i'm gonna do 300 grams and then it asks for 120 grams of the beeswax but i'm going to do 240 um and then i usually use coconut oil but don't have any but this is um cosmetic cosmetic grade tallow that we rendered down when we did our beef kill so i'm going to use this instead of coconut oil it's very moisturizing and lovely has no scent at all because it's cosmetic grade so um yeah 
those three things are going to go in the pot and be heated up and then we're going to take it off the heat so let's get cracking all right i need 300 grams of this shea butter And then it says 300 grams of coconut oil. I'm going to change spoons because that's dirty. This can also be used as food. So the game here is, and it's going to take ages. This is the hardest part of doing it, really. It's such an easy thing to do. But waiting for this to melt and stirring and stirring and stirring is the hard part. So I'm not going to bore you with it. I'm just going to show you now what it looks like. And then we'll be back in a minute, or probably 10 minutes actually, yeah. and I'll show you it melted. And then we'll move on with the rest. All right, a couple of you things. This has started, no, that's why, no, that's why we use this. Jackson's asking questions in the background. Um, but, so the water started boiling and that started melting under there. It's, you know, you can see how it sunk yeah. down a bit. Yeah. I'll, but I'll what I did want to say is, did you guys hear the mistake I made? Down. So the, you'll see in the recipe, um, I said 600 mils of coconut oil. So it actually only calls for 75 there. grams, sorry. Um, so I did 300, which means what I'll do is I'll just use 150 grams less of olive oil. It's not a big deal. Just make sure that your quantities match up. Um, and so the point of the, the things that set hard and the runnier oils is to keep that sort of pasty, nice, sort of buttery um, consistency it does set but you can sort of get it out like a, a nice hand cream sort of thing so yeah um, I made a bit of a stuff up but I wanted to just call that out right now so we use tallow in place of coconut oil and it only calls for 75 grams of that in the recipe I'm doubling it was meant to be 150 so there's 150 extra grams of oil in here so to make up for the mistake, I'll just put, say, 150 grams of um, oil, and then that would have to be doubled. So that's 450 grams. So, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Getting there. Beeswax takes longer to melt. I think I need a bigger container. Nearly there. The last thing to melt is always the beeswax. I'm going to have to be careful when I'm adding all the next ingredients. Almost there. See, they're almost completely dissolved. So this is the longest part. I think it's been 15 minutes in real time and sorry about the lighting and the oven this kitchen is the worst thing about this farm that we bought but well the house is not great but the kitchen's the worst part oh actually the bathroom's the worst part, worst part um but while we're waiting for this to finish melting i did want to say um even if you don't have cows this preparation that i'm making here is fantastic for all around the homestead um, it's excellent used inside the house on um, cracked heels you know how your elbows get a little bit rough sometimes um, you can use it on any sorts of injuries that are sort of rashes and things uh, on any of your animals really it's very safe and gentle full of the best quality ingredients there we go I think we're done we're going to turn this off and I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to pull that out when I've got two hands. I'm not holding a camera because I don't want to get burned. Pull it out, run it over to the Thermomix and we'll weigh the rest of the stuff in. All right, here we are. Oops, I touched the Thermomix and she's, she's touchy. She doesn't like that. Tear her again. I'm going to put 300 grams of olive oil if I have it in here. If not, I'll fill the rest up with castor oil okay the reason I'm doing the olive oil next is because olive oil can take the temperatures 
that we've got this at. It's pretty well 200 grams. I think I could probably get some more olive oil. If not, I'll just do 100 grams of castor oil instead. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. But I don't want it to be super hot because I want the castor oil because it's... I don't think, you know, if you heat it, it's very good. But we're kind of hitting our max capacity for this jug, so we have to be very careful. The reason I picked this jug is it's got a really amazing pouring spout and I want to get it into those little tubs there. Excuse my daughter's socks on the bench. Right, and um, these little containers, I've just marked them so people know what's in them and written the ingredients on the back in case I ever have to share it with someone. So next I think we'll do the castor oil. I think I only need 100 grams of that, but I'm going to get it off off the thermi for that. So this has got the castor oil and all those things in it. The only thing it doesn't have in it is that and these. I want to get it into the containers so that it's not too hot. And I think I've got too much, so I've got this. Just another plastic tub that we can use if there's any leftover. We don't want to waste any of this. This is going to be tricky because I've really filled it really high. So I'm going to sit this in here. Let's do it. Little bit of space for the other oils. Are you going to the moody one too? I'm probably going to have to, honey. Ah, oh, yeah. Because I don't have enough. Yeah, you might okay. do. Um, jug's not the best. It's better than. Gosh, it's so soft. Is it? Mhm. Mm Before it starts to set, I'm going to put it. Do this one as well. Oh, I'm going to get oil all over that. All right, before it starts to set, and now that it's cooling down, it does cool down quite rapidly. Oh, lovely bit more there. Oh, yeah. Why do you put other balm on them? Why? Yes. It helps keep their teats nice and soft and supple. Um, which makes easy makes for easier milking. They really enjoy it. It, it makes them feel better. Uh, it, this particular one with this particular recipe has a lot of healing things in it. So quite often poor mama cows get a lot of issues like calves cut their teats or give them little rashes and things. You know, like especially once they get older, the little calves eating hay and then decides it wants feed, usually with hay in its mouth. <laughs> Cuts up the the poor mama's um, teats so yeah it's just to make them feel a bit better and have a bit better time of it you know mm. all right rosehip oil mm, I'm just yeah. gonna go by feel there we go that's a lot of rosehip oil but it's so good for them now Frankie and I will give this a stir um, what does Frankie do Ten. One, two, Mom? three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll tell you in a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a little bit less in there. So I'm just, I guessed at these things. I kind of know how they work now. I've been using them for quite some time. But frankincense is all things healing. He's gentle and nourishing and nurturing. Ah, this always happens with the myrrh. Excuse my teeth. Mer gets like, it's like a tree sap, I think. Mm. It's a very thick oil. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful stuff though. And the caps come out with it, so I'm just going to... Mer's the queen of oils. Uh -huh. She's very gentle and nourishing. They're all, they're all good healers. The tea tree is for something different. 
it's antibacterial and antimicrobial and things that keeps them healthy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. six. And lavender is to keep them calm and relaxed. It is also good at keeping bugs and flies and all that sort of stuff away. Um, it is also good for rashes and skin irritations, burning, burns, anything like that. Um, and it also has its own properties like uh, for anti microbial and things like that. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if I'm having a bad day in the milking stand, one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just smelling this stuff makes me feel better. Five, six. Um, I can put a little bit more of this in. You want Just a little bit. Castor oil. What does that do? It's really good for you. It's really great for skin. It's amazing. People can drink it as well. It's really, really healing. But you know, um, this you know, doing it this way as well is nowhere near as expensive as it could be. Um, actually, I'll clean that spoon up. I'm going to use this one here. It's nowhere near as expensive as it could be. It's so worth doing. Um, these girls work really hard for us and make us milk and raise our baby, well, raise their babies, but, you know, which we end up having as milkers or meat. So I just feel like if we can treat them the absolute best, then, you know, they deserve it. Why not? Look at that. It's already starting to set. Now this stuff sets white. Oh. Oh, yeah, I remember when... Oops, I spilled she, a little bit. I remember when she um, made us some. Who? Carla? Yeah. It's got a name. Yeah, Carla's great. And I'll stir this one. It's already setting. How cool. So the way this recipe is set up, and like I said, it'll be in the comments below. Um, it doesn't get too hard that you can't just look at it. Oh, it's so good. It smells so amazing. Good. Feels amazing. We use it for everything, don't we, Grace? Moisturize. Yeah. Chapped lips. This is an amazing yeah. recipe for chapped lips. Chapped. Um, chapped heels, you know, when you get dry lips. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant cracked. Cracked, chapped, that sort of thing. Yeah. That's why they call it chapstick, honey. Because uh. chapping. Um, it is good for all things. I put it on my tattoos to make them come back nice. Your skin absorbs this beautiful stuff. It'll just feel amazing. It's the best moisturizer. It's even safe for use on your face, neck, everything like that, ears. Um, when I'm finished doing that, I usually put a little bit in the, in the ends of my hair. Honestly, I've never found anything that it wasn't great for. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you go and make yourself some beautiful stuff. Trust me, you wanna do it. Um, you can even pour this if you wanted to get hold of some chapstick like empty containers you can could actually make up your own chapstick with it um, you might even you could even change the oils you might not want to put tea tree because it's a bit drying for lips um, you might want to do gosh I don't know anything you could do really anything you like with it um, but if you are using it for cows you can thank me later your girls are going to love it um, there's 101 uses for it. If you think of more uses when you've made it, please comment below. Put them all in there so that all the rest of the viewers can enjoy those amazing ideas too. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a long time coming. I've, I waited till um, I needed utter balm again to make it um, and we're getting low. I slather it on there and they really enjoy it. Keeps their udders beautiful and healthy. Uh, oh yeah, we keep the lids off while it's setting so that it doesn't sweat and no water ends up in it. So until these, if you have a look, Grace, show everyone. Until oh, these wow. um, go white, we're gonna leave the lids off. We'll just leave the lids near there. Um, look at the little udders. <laughs> yeah, I was just being a bit creative while I was waiting for that to melt. Um, yeah, so get yourself some of this beautiful stuff and thank you so much for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next one, take care of each other and bye for now.